Warning, some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. In today's case, we will look into what happened to trooper Calvin Jenks. Calvin Jenks was only 24 years old when he was killed during what he thought would be a normal traffic stop. Calvin had been married to his wife, Sarah, for only four months and they lived in Tipton County, Tennessee. Calvin was described as a gentleman with a great smile and personality. He was passionate about helping people and had always wanted to go into law enforcement. He moved with his family from Michigan to Tennessee in 1989. After graduating high school, he attended a community college and then he became a Tennessee Highway Patrol trooper. Calvin finished trooper school in 2004 and later transferred to Tipton County, Tennessee to be closer to his wife, Sarah. Everything seemed to be going well for the 24-year-old as he set out for work on January 6, 2007. On that night, Calvin was getting ready to work a late shift. Before the end of his shift, he contacted Sarah and told her he just had some paperwork to finish before he came home. Shortly after a 911 call came to the police around 9.40 p.m. from a raccoon hunter in the area. The hunter said he had seen a trooper's patrol car and that the trooper was lying in the roadway. When the deputies arrived, they immediately recognized Calvin. He had been shot in the head and killed almost instantly. He had also been ran over by the car and had tire tracks on his legs. He was shot once above the eye and another time in the back of his head with a .25 caliber handgun. Calvin's gun was found still in his holster, and his hat was located just a few yards from his body. The police knew that Calvin had most likely done a traffic stop, and things had gone wrong. All troopers had dash cams in their vehicles, so officers knew that they were most likely going to see Calvin being killed when looking over the footage. On the dash cam, Calvin can be seen talking to someone who was standing near the back of the car. Calvin did a pat down and asked the man how old was he, and why is he in the area? The man responded that he was 19 and was from Brownsville. Calvin tells the man not to move as he walks to the driver's side door. He can be seen taking his hat off and placing it on top of the car. As Calvin is leaning into the car, he asked if they had any drugs in the car. While asking his question, the passenger pulled out a gun and shot him. The driver runs to the car and one of them says, get him out. Without any remorse or surprise at what had happened, Calvin is thrown on the ground and ran over as the suspects drive away. The dashcam footage was grainy, but you can see the driver was wearing an orange t-shirt. The passenger was wearing an oversized white hoodie, but it was hard to tell what his ethnicity was. The license plate was described as bent up so that the plate couldn't be read. A statewide bolo was put out for the car description as well as the descriptions of the suspects. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation was brought in to assist in the case. Several police agencies sat at major exits hoping to catch the suspects. The police went to the Midway Market, which was the closest store near the crime scene. About five minutes before Calvin was shot, the car, which was now described as a silver Toyota, pulled into the lot. The driver in the orange shirt had entered the store to ask for directions to Brownsville. Brownsville police received a tip. An employee at the Exxon gas station had seen the suspects. The police arrived at the Exxon around 12.30 a.m. The passenger of the vehicle could be seen in the surveillance footage. On his oversized hoodie, the letters a TX could be seen. The police knew that the men had mentioned that they were from Texas. He had asked the clerk if they had any wipes to clean out a car. The clerk said no, but gave them directions to the closest Walmart. Next, the police went to Walmart around 1 a.m. They said that the Walmart employees were very helpful in assisting them. At 9.55 p.m., the man in the white hoodie walked into the store. He had walked to the automotive section and purchased Armor All Wipes. 
After walking out, the driver and passenger met in the parking lot. The driver then walked in and purchased a dark colored t-shirt with a Superman logo on the front. The passenger also changed his clothes and changed into a dark colored hoodie. The police searched the Walmart trash and were shocked that the two men had discarded a lot of evidence. In the trash, they found the orange t-shirt, .25 caliber shell casings, and bloody wipes. Officers also found Calvin's flashlight and a forensic team also found Calvin's DNA on the orange t-shirt. The items were sent to the lab for further testing. In the early morning hours, a highway patrolman had pulled over two drug dealers. They had been arrested for marijuana and were separated for questioning. The two men revealed that they had an interaction with two Hispanic males who had been traveling to the area from Texas for a drug deal. The suspects had ditched their car and asked for a ride to a hotel in Nashville. They appeared to be nervous and anxious. When they arrived at the hotel, the men had gone into the room to get the money but noticed a handgun on the nightstand. They left immediately and believed the Hispanic males were more than drug dealers. The two Hispanic males were arrested 12 hours after the murder. The driver of the car was identified as Orlando Garcia, 19, and the passenger was identified as Alejandro Gona, 17. Inside the hotel room, the police found marijuana and cocaine. They also found Ghana's white hoodie with the letters a TX and a receipt from the Brownsville Walmart were found in the dumpster. The police asked where the murder weapon was. Garcia revealed that they had thrown their weapons in a Wendy's dumpster about five miles away from the hotel. Inside that dumpster, the weapons were found wrapped in a towel. Ghana and Garcia were both charged with first-degree murder and they went on trial in 2008. At trial, the timeline and events of that night were revealed. Ghana and Garcia had traveled to the area for a drug deal. They stopped at the Midway Market to ask for directions and were pulled over by Calvin about five minutes later. Calvin had pulled them over for speeding but smelled weed and knew that there were drugs in the car. Garcia admitted that there were drugs in the center console, which explained why Calvin was leaning into the car. Ghana then shot Calvin and they fled. They stopped at Exxon and Walmart and were picked up to go into Nashville. Alejandro Ghana was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. Orlando Garcia was found guilty on the lesser charge of facilitating first-degree murder. He was sentenced to 19 years. Every year on January 6, law enforcement from the West and Middle Tennessee pay their respects in the area where Calvin was killed. It's called the Sea of Blue Law Enforcement Memorial.